The U.S. Air Force just released images of some of its most advanced hypersonic weapons, in particular the HACM, or Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile. Now, these pictures came out as a part of a hypersonic weapons familiarization training process that was being conducted by the U.S. Air Force and included academics and Air Force officials alike briefing F-15E, B-1B, and B-52 pilots on the way these hypersonic weapons are being developed to be leveraged. Now, these pictures mostly show bits and pieces of that hypersonic attack cruise missile, which is a scramjet powered cruise missile that's nothing like the hypersonic weapons that are already in service for adversaries like China and Russia. Now, Russia does claim to have a scramjet powered missile called Zircon in service, but to date, there has been absolutely no evidence to substantiate those claims, meaning this could potentially be the world's first scramjet powered missile to actually enter service. Now, the HACM is sort of a continuation of the older hypersonic air breathing weapon concept, or Hawk. And to be honest, it actually has a great deal in common with the Boeing X-51 Wave Rider from many years ago. The idea here is to use a conventional rocket booster to get the weapon up to speed. Once it's going fast enough for its scramjet to function, the booster falls away and the scramjet comes online, helping this missile maintain speeds in excess of Mach 5 while they close with their targets. Now, what's very different about a hypersonic cruise missile versus the hypersonic boost glide weapons that China and Russia have in service is all about how they're powered, and how they fly. You see, a hypersonic glide vehicle, or HGV, like China's DFZF and Russia's Avangard, could be seen as an extension of ballistic missile technology, but they separate from their booster at a lower altitude than a ballistic warhead might, and then they travel, maneuvering but unpowered, at extremely high speeds toward their targets, sometimes in excess of Mach 20. Now, conversely, a hypersonic cruise missile powered by an exotic propulsion system like a scramjet flies more like an aircraft or a suicide drone along a fairly horizontal trajectory. Now, these are air-launched weapons, which means they'll be carried aloft by an F-15E Strike Eagle, a B-1B Lancer, or a B-52 Stratofortress. Whereas a hypersonic glide vehicle, or a ballistic missile for that matter, might be coming in from a fairly high altitude, a scramjet-powered cruise cruise missile could be flying at very high speeds at lower altitudes, which means it can hide behind the curvature of the Earth to avoid detection and even behind terrain as it closes with its target. In fact, even subsonic cruise missiles can be extremely dangerous for air defense systems for all these same reasons. Despite flying at much lower speeds, subsonic cruise missiles like the Tomahawk have proven to be extremely capable even against fairly advanced air defense systems, especially when launched in large volume. Now, the Air Force intends to get its hypersonic attack cruise missile, or HACM, into service by 2027. But interestingly, they also included a picture of a B-52 carrying what appears to be an AGM-183 Arrow. Now, the Arrow, you may recall, was the hypersonic glide vehicle, or HGV, the U.S. tried to rush into service until a few failed tests led them to cancel the program last year. Though it is worth noting just how rigorous the American weapons testing apparatus is. In fact, the AGM-183 Arrow saw more successful tests than Russia's avant-garde has seen in all. But because America wants to arm these weapons with conventional warheads and use them from day one, as opposed to using them as a deterrent weapon, the barrier for entry is quite a bit higher, and they need to be far more reliable. Now, details about the AGM-183 and the HACM are very limited, but we do know that they're just two of more than 70 hypersonic weapons in active development, drawing funds from the Pentagon's coffers. And at least one of them in the Air Force Research Lab's Mayhem program is actually more akin to trying to field a hypersonic drone instead.